Are y'all ready? <clears throat> Born. And five. Yeah. Four. Four. Three. Three. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kevin on stage. She's... That chick AJ. That chick AJ. We're back on Sneakers Monty's night. Kevin's like 2021. Welcome to another podcast. Church announcements real quick. DC this week sold out. Six shows? Five shows? Six shows. <laughs> oh, we're doing six? Uh-huh. Oh. And Dallas is six shows. Oh. Trying to pull up the calendar. Oh. Well. Next week after that, Minneapolis. Let me tell y'all. Uh, of the cities we have left, Minneapolis likely... Ah, we have traveled from Minneapolis. Gonna make it Minneapolis and Oklahoma City, I ain't gonna tell you. I ain't gonna hold y'all. Never coming back. The ticket sales just let, I just want to tell the cities that I want y'all to know the way the, the 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 act thinks about it. If you don't have early positive ticket sales and people show up late or buy at the door, it looks risky. And you know, you're taking a risk. When when I come, I I got to pay everybody regardless of what Y'all do. On time. Yeah. Everybody, Angel and them were great friends. Mm. Great friends. But there's also a business relationship. She's not going to be like, oh, Kevin was light. Ah, you know what? You just don't even worry about it this week. You know, to hear it, hey, they did their job. They did. They did their job. They be telling the joke. So, you know, you are, as an act, you're going to go to this. I'd, I'd, honestly, I'd rather go to D.C. twice in a season or Dallas or twice in a season. Or stay there a week. Or, or I, I'd be better twice. off going to Atlanta in March and December than going to one of these other cities where you you either don't buy tickets or it's or it's late. So that's how I think about it. And I'm a man of my word. I told y'all when we did uh, Josh was there. We did Buffalo. Hmm? We did oh, Syracuse. Yeah. We did Springfield, Massachusetts. It was a great. We had a great road trip. And I said, <laughs> it was a great road trip down to New York. Oh, I'm not doing this again. We, Never we, again. Have we gone back to Syracuse we and or Buffalo? Memphis? I didn't even say nothing about Memphis. Stinking it up. Oh, oh no, Memphis stunk it Every up. Every time. Mm. Real comedians both times. And then after we went, <clears throat> never really. Even, and I'm talking about one off night. Barely. Mm. And that's okay. But like Nashville, cities like Nashville and Detroit where I couldn't find dates because everybody else was jumping on there. Selfish. I'll go them twice. So yeah. your city, you know, if you want to come see me and I live in that city, Come this time, Oklahoma City. Your days Never are numbered. See me <laughs> I've been Never, your I've been, days are numbered. I, I have done better in Tulsa consistently <laughs> oh. than Oklahoma City. Mm. Josh, we did a thousand in Tulsa. Well, you we know, did Tulsa that was a good is time. The I, buckle I wish, of the Bible Belt. Yeah. Jesus. Oh man, that was a really cool theater too. Yeah, Philly cities like Philly, Chicago, Chicago. Shut Chicago was. Chicago was the best city we've had on tour. Yeah. It had all the elements. It had yes, it did. five amazing shows. I think mm-hmm. so. It had a very, um, the audience came they to did. laugh. I think a six lot of shows time. plays a big factor. <clears throat> it does. Because that because late some, Sunday show. Houston had five of six. Mm-hmm. That sixth show, the mm-hmm. added late. DC will be a good case study. I just say that I had four good shows in Chicago, but the venue was great. Venue was great. Audience brought their stuff. Uh, yes. And then the green room was great, too. So you get all, yes. all of that combined. All that combined. And also, I'm curious about other performers. Do you be going to some cities and they just be like, this city just don't be like excited. Mm-hmm. Like Las Vegas for me. And, and I've talked to Tony and other comedians. They'd be like, yeah, Vegas is tough. And a lot of people say LA is a tough place to perform in. People just want to be cool. But like the East Coast mostly is just, just great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway. Um, just yesterday... R. Kelly was found guilty and trigger warning. Honestly, if you don't want to hear us talk about this, you it's in the title. That way, you know, that's the way, you uh, know, it's, it's, it's a humongous story in the black community. Mm -hmm. Uh, We ain't got to stay here all day, but you know, um, I, I can honestly say given the, all the evidence and everything, I was still honestly like, huh, they found him guilty. That wasn't looking good for him. No, I've no. seen one video where they were wheeling in evidence. Good. Uh, it looked like a wheelbarrow. Mm-hmm. And um, his trial was not televised. So I think that's one of the only reasons why it wasn't as big as, you know, as it could yeah. have been. Uh, but I was kind of following it online and stuff. 
And it wasn't looking good for him early. It wasn't looking good for him late. Uh, I think they got him for racketeering. Yes, they did. Which and is this a continuing is just, criminal enterprise. Uh, yes. And I can understand how it would be that. This is just his charges in New York. He still got to face charges for Illinois. And then one of, I think, Michigan. Mm. Federal charges at that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, here's here's the thing about, uh, we talk a lot about cancel culture in general on the internet mm-hmm. and stuff. Uh, I don't think this is cancel culture. Well, this is two things. This is facing the consequences of your actions. Uh-huh. This is criminal culture. Uh-huh. You commit a crime. Uh, we live in a uh, world where crimes are punishable by law. Mm-hmm. There's that. Cancel culture is, to me, where your f- actual fans who liked you and supported you withdraw that support. Mm-hmm. Lil Nas X was saying... People say cancel culture is this and that. And he said most time people are canceling you. They didn't like you anyway. Mm-hmm. So he's saying they people little not saying people who don't like me who yell and say they don't like me like Lil Boosie. He's like he's not canceling me. He was never a supporter of mine. He never right. liked me. So R. Kelly was the first artist for me that I was like, I no longer support you or your music. I no longer listen to your music. I delete your music when it comes on a like an Alexa shuffle or something like that. If you play a nineties. Uh, playlist or whatever, mm-hmm. I skip it. Mm-hmm. On my phone, I've taken his songs off. Sometimes I feel like Apple, if you let Apple go, it will, you know how like you finish an album and it'll play albums in that genre? genre? You can it will block, pull you can that. block songs or artists too. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me do that. So that's kind of <laughs> how I that. feel where I have canceled him. Uh, and I do want to say one more thing because I saw this comment in here. Uh, somebody said, I know y'all not on Harvey Weinstein's we- we- Weinstein's internet mad at R. Kelly. First of all, R. Kelly, Har- Harvey Weinstein, I, I want to make this I, distinction. I'm sorry. I have to interrupt. Okay, go ahead. I Angel. have to interrupt. Go ahead, Angel. I'm going to block him. Because my, this is an issue with me. When black women mm-hmm. are being taken advantage of and we call out if it is a black man that has done it to us, why in the hell... Does it even bring into conversation what we do or how we hold a white person accountable that ain't got crap to do with us? Like, I'm not Mm -hmm. saying that these white women don't deserve to be advocated for, but when it comes to black women who a lot of times don't speak up because they know no one is going to do something, especially if it's someone who's beloved, Mm -hmm. to dare try to put a cape on this man when finally... It's so bad with R. Kelly that him getting off the first time was made into a sketch. By by uh, Dave Chappelle. And That's we all how, laughed. We all laughed. Him literally being like, this man could say his social security number into a camera while pissing on someone, saying my name is R. Kelly. His mama could walk in and be like, hey, Robert. And yet and still, no one is going to care. Like, how dare we? And I hate when I see that. I hate, uh, I remember when uh, R. Kelly was first being put on trial and people were like, oh, them 14-year-old girls knew what they were doing. This is a grown mf and man. Mm-hmm. This is not a 14-year-old and a 14-year-old doing stuff that might be inappropriate. This is a grown a man and people who are underage, regardless of whether or not they're teens or not, being taken advantage of. How dare we bring up some white men? I don't care. I truly do not care. <laughs> it just, it baffles me. It truly does. It baffles me that we always got to bring up white folk. Yes, I hope Harvey, Harvey Weinstein's ends up underneath a jail to rot there. But today, on this day, I am happy that black women are actually being protected by a justice system that could give two craps about them. And the fact that anybody from our community would have anything to say other than, thank God, blows my mind. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I feel like uh, the other thing that I always, it's interesting to me, I didn't know who Harvey Weinstein was as a person. I'd seen like the Weinstein company on movies or something like he that. Got money. R. Kelly was someone I grew up listening to. Mm-hmm. So obviously people who are a part of our community are going to resonate with us more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people who are part of the film community, Harvey Weinstein's probably going to resonate more if they didn't listen to R. Kelly. And the one thing I saw on Twitter that I, I, I hadn't thought about uh, and really kind of changed my mind on how I talk about this, and I wasn't going to protect R. Kelly anyway, but somebody was like, every time you protect an abuser, the women on your timeline who felt abused or been abused see that. Right. Right. And I don't know the statistics, but I know uh, a lot of times sexual assault uh, goes unreported. 
right? Mm-hmm. People uh, have no idea how many women don't say anything and still ain't said nothing. Right. They just don't. Right. And you think you oh, R. Kelly this, and but it's music, but this and that. And somebody who you know, more than likely, you know personally that you don't know that happened to sees that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to personally be a person who was like adding to that yeah. um, part of their life. So I, uh, and, 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 and a lot of times people also say separate the art from the artist and this and that. When I watched that documentary and, uh, his, his people and the women were like, his people were like, he would take, you know, like if you really listen to his music and understand what he was talking about, Mm -hmm. you could see where he would like the age ain't nothing but a number. Yeah. Right. Writing that song for Aaliyah, who was 15 at the time that they got illegally married. My son, 15. Yeah. Mm. He don't know nothing from nothing. A 27-year-old woman could easily manipulate him. Mm -hmm. Easily. Absolutely. So um, I can't separate his music from his uh, crimes because his crimes inspired his music. That is the music that we're listening to, and I just can't. I personally can't. Every time I think, you know, see it. And honestly, I was whack, too. I was whack because I seen that tape when I was a kid uh, or younger. I don't know how old I was. And I knew then, or I believed I knew, Mm -hmm. and I show kept pressing play, right? It wasn't until I, like, heard from the women. So Mm -hmm. I know it's easy to say, well, yes, now I believe the women. Like, But it also took me until I I put, like, a face to the stories. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I I believed all the other stuff, and, you know, it was kind of a grainy video and this and that, and I laughed at that sketch. So I was whack as well. Right, <laughs> but just I because I was the whack ones. then doesn't mean I want to continue to be me. whack. Like I realize, m- me and people like me. There's a lot of people like me who heard whispers, rumors, and continue to consume his music and products, which allows him to continue to make the to money, which allows does. the record labels to funnel, or, you know, front money. Because at the end of the day, they're going with whatever makes money. Oh, one hundred. They don't care nothing about. Nothing. Even when we were talking about the baby, uh, they were saying um, the festivals go with the with public. If the public don't want to rock with the baby, it's making a big stink. He's off. That's when they if the public them. doesn't care. He's on. Right. They are just uh, what, what was the name of the company, Josh, that does like Coachella and Stagecoach? Golden Voice. They, these, this is a million dollar, multi million dollar business. Mm-hmm. They're booking. 60, 90, 100 acts for these festivals. Jeez, Louise. If you're top billing. On there, they know that's gonna make 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 a difference. Yeah, mm-hmm. but also they're paying them to get people in the gates as well. Those those top headliners are getting close to a million dollars per show. That's what no. I'm saying. So if we don't, if we say nah, I'm not going to your festival if you have this artist, they're not gonna risk people boycotting. Right. And that's yeah. how you that's that's how you make your voice heard or, yeah. or known. So um, uh, <clears throat> real quick. At what, um, because this was literally the first thing I saw this morning. Like, you know, how your phone gives you news updates. So, this yeah. was the first thing I saw. So, I put it in the docket this morning. But I, what I realized was that <clears throat> not, not his case in particular, but his case is a very, um, it tells why the Me Too movement ha- has to exist in the form that it has been existing for someone to have this amount of evidence against them, but has been unstoppable until yeah. 2021. Yeah. Or, I mean, he uh, he was put in prison in 2019. I think I he's been there for a while. Is it's, it's crazy that this is the world that we have lived in for so long that someone could be so blatant and bold about the things that they're doing that it's easily to be able to find the evidence to back it up. Mm-hmm. But, the system or the powers that be are never going to do anything to rectify it. So that was a big reason also why I was like, Oh no, we have to talk about it because I do feel as though like this is a huge moment to see someone who has been able to get away with doing this publicly. It wasn't, I mean, for it to be rumors to get down to us in middle America, we right. were not in the entertainment industry as of yet, but we're hearing the rumors of, oh, he be messing with these young girls and such and such. But like still he's over here making hits, still touring. It does, it could feel, if you are a person who has ever been a victim of abuse, it can feel like, well, 
Ain't nobody going to ever. If, 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 if you can't get him. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever going to do anything to anybody. So yeah. for me, it was just like uh, like a, it was kind of like I was able to exhale. Because it was like, really, it can be exhausting to think, God dang, y'all yeah. really just going to let him tap dance about this? So that's the reason why I was like, I don't know. We're going to talk about this today. I, and I apologize for anyone who is triggered. I hopefully you moved forward if this is not something that you wanted to talk about because we will have the timestamps in the, uh, you know, the upload. But I'm glad we did talk about it. Yeah, we should put a TW uh, uh, at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like, um, yes, I am uh, I am pretty certain that he will spend a lot of time in jail. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. Uh, spend his last days there based just based off the fact that I don't know if they'll allow him to serve his terms um, currently concurrently or if he's going to have to do them each separately. And if that's the case, he's not going he's not going to make it out. No, he's what 50 something. Uh, I don't know how old he is, yeah. but he um, got some decades. He uh, got put he on his books. have some 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 time uh, in other news. Um, this was also a, uh, a weird weekend. Um, Kelly Price. Um, let me see how to word this. She was, she was reported missing. Yes. Okay. I'm going to just go by the facts that we, that you can actually say. Right, 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 right. Kelly Price was reported missing, mm -hmm. uh, this past weekend. Um, uh, I saw on social media people being like, man, I ain't heard from Kelly Price in a minute. She said she had COVID a couple of weeks ago or a month ago and haven't seen her since. Hope she's okay. Started seeing that. And then somebody else was like, oh, actually, she's been reporting as a missing person. So then, like, very quickly, uh, yes. a lot of stuff happened. It was a wildfire. It was a lot of stuff happening uh, in quick succession. Then it was like, uh, I believe it was her attorney was like, she's okay, mm -hmm. guys. I've spoken to her. Uh, and then people were like, nah. And no, it wasn't that people were like, nah. It was her sister. Ah, uh, yes. Coming yes. on to a radio show this, called in. So the attorney said, I've spoken to her. She's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Next thing on the timeline, uh, sister. Called into a radio called show. Into a radio show. And said, I ain't talked to my sister until I see her face. I don't trust that she's okay. Okay. You know what's interesting about that? So when we were watching the Malice at the Palace documentary, uh -huh. and they were saying how the fans take on the personality of the players on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, and when Ben Wallace threw his headband and his wristbands at Ron Artest, mm -hmm. somebody threw something at him as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that the sister had did that. Uh. Right? But I saw the tide, because I'm pretty much always on Twitter watching, even if I'm not tweeting, I saw the tide shift from I hope she's okay. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when I say tide, I mean majority of people. Yeah. I hope she's okay. Oh, her attorney says she's okay. If I ain't seen her, uh, I don't believe she's okay. She better go live mm -hmm. uh, because she used to be very active on social media and she ain't got to be on there long or go live or post a video. If I don't see her face saying it. And then there was some stuff about the boyfriend, which was like, um, is it not her husband? Uh, or I'm sorry, I don't know if it's her husband or boyfriend. Yeah, okay, uh, could be, could be. But there was like people digging into his past, and then Kelly was, uh, and then the sister seemed like was promoting an album at the same time. That's the part I didn't know about, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, an album? Uh, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> supposed to drop? I think it was on Monday. It was supposed to drop like the next week, and it was like around the time that this was happening. <laughs> She's like, oh, I don't know where my sister is. But let me tell you, I better find her. That's just that's on my that's on my album. But I wanna who does that? I'm dropping new merch. So it says find Kelly. I'm I'm sending it out via ship station because that's where you need to be at if you got many different pieces of oh, merchandise. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> to send out. Yo, you guys, this is a podcast that is sponsored by ShipStation. And let me tell you, if you are selling anything online, it is time to prepare for the busiest time of the year. Y'all oh, know it is. It's the most wonderful time of the year. You know, Black Friday's coming up. People are about to be in real e commerce type of world, purchasing gifts, purchasing things for um, their families. And you want to be able to uh, minimize the chaos of having to. 
get your stuff from over at Etsy. Get your stuff from over your own website and making sure everything gets sent off on time. ShipStation is the platform you want to use. It is so easy. It saves you money. Here's some reasons why. ShipStation has um, amazing prices on uh, fulfillment as far as in uh, discounted rates with UPS, USPS, even FedEx. Because obviously, if you're a small business, you can't. You know, it's hard to like throw your weight around to be like, well, I want to. Um, I would love a, di- a smaller discounted rate on shipping. Ship station, ship is like, we got that for you. Don't you worry about that. It automates just about any shipping task. So you spend less time sorting through orders and more time doing what you what you do best, which is creating your product. And you can easily import orders from any sales channel. Um, so it can really take away the frustration and the confusion and make everything quick, easy and convenient. Um, also, uh, ShipStation has the rates, like I was saying, that other Fortune 500 companies would have. So you don't have to worry about assigning these major contracts or having major commitments to get those type of rates when you're with ShipStation. So this is what we want you to do. It's never too early to start prepping for the holiday rush. So get a head start with ShipStation. Our listeners can use our offer code CREW. CREW that's with crew, a K. Yes, with a K. To get a 60-day free trial just in time for the holidays. That's two months of stress-free holiday day shopping for free just go to shipstation.com click on the microphone at the top and enter in crew, crew. k-r-e-w ship station make ship happen oh, oh. Um, so then the brat came out and was like uh did the brat come out before kelly i don't know the timeline yeah that's the part I, that's, that's a little the, confusing the timeline and i'll be honest about this this scenario uh the situation i couldn't keep up with everything was, was happening so fast and uh-huh. happening on different uh, platforms. And I was really late to it. And we were also on the road and shooting the food show. And I'm less, you know, in tune when we're shooting during the day. So I don't know the timeline. I was just going back when we were going to talk about going. I'm sorry. And just, I'm sorry. Somebody's clarifying and helping correct us in the comments. And I, I'm going to assume this person is right. She was saying it wasn't the sister who mentioned new music. It was Nikki Gilbert. Oh, was it? Yes. Nikki Gilbert is her publicist? No, M- Nikki Gilbert is a singer from the 90s. Nikki Gilbert had a new album? Yes, she came out and uh, was talking about Kelly, but was prom- uh, promoting her um, album at the same po- time. So That's she was much. just like, <laughs> where's Kelly? <laughs> Where's Kelly? Mm-mm, blank, blank. Because that's the thing. I heard the 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 uh, radio interview, and I didn't hear the sister promote an album, but I wasn't sure uh, if there okay. was something else. But anyways, that's okay, what it so was. Okay, so that's why people were like, "We need to see." Okay, okay. So thank okay. you, Just Jazzy. She was like, "What are y'all? What is y'all talking about?" That's there you why go. I was I I, I upfront admit this one was kind of hard to figure out the the timeline. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Um, yes, Brownstone. Y'all right? Nikki Gilbert was from Brownstone. Ooh, if you love me. Say so the brat was basically like, we'll, we'll, we'll go to, to Kelly's video as well. The brat was like, y'all, this is my friend. Mm-hmm. And I don't know when this video was released before or after Kelly made her video. Right. This is my friend. I've spoken to her. She don't have to prove nothing to y'all. Yeah. Right. Uh, if her friends and family know she's okay, that's all that really matters. Yeah. Um, either way, Kelly went on TMZ. Uh, well, I saw it on Team Z. I don't know where it was released first, mm-hmm. but there was. Uh, she was like, she died. Yeah, they lost her. They lost her. She came back. She said fans were coming to her house. That's the part that I was just like, oh, God. knocking on her door. That she had to leave her own home. She had to leave her house so that fans would not come knock on her door. That's so sad. Outside of COVID, that is terrible. That's that is okay. so doggone fearful. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I live in a gated community. Like, I don't want people to be able to come to my house. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I want a guard. When you come, they writing your license plate down. <laughs> the gate closing behind you. Okay? Don't do it. I just, uh, you know, uh, black culture, and when I say this, I am including myself into this. We love a good conspiracy theory. So if you give us the opportunity to to conspire on what might have happened, we will take it to the umpteenth yes. level. Yes. So just even planting the seed that, wait a second, it wasn't Kelly who said she was okay. 
who is it? And they were knocking on our neighbor's doors. Can <laughs> yeah. you imagine? That I, I just, I now those people I would have to say are just lunatics. Right. Those are like, those are fans that just so happen to also be crazy. Because I will say, I'm not saying that everybody who got caught up in the conspiracy of, is this because even I when, I, when the sister said I ain't seen it, I was like, wait, wait. Whoa, so on. here the thing uh, that's another thing and this is kind of how i feel now this mm-hmm. might not be the best situation to describe this but I, i'll use it as a talking point mm-hmm. in kelly's video she was like me and my sister are we have a strained relationship <laughs> yes. it is not common for us to go i think she said the last time i saw her in person was at my mom's funeral mm-hmm. it's not common for us to go a year without uh speaking mm-hmm. what uh me and angel was talking about this when we was walking uh, through the uh, chicago airport o'hare um, it is hard for people to understand if, if you don't have a strain, like I don't have a strain relationship right. with my brother or sister. Right. I can't imagine having one for that long. Me and my brother had some beef early in, in college. And it was a long story and it's a really short story, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had some uh, beef early in college, but nothing that would ever prevent us from talking if there was a serious concern. Yeah. But People usually see issues the way they see them from their perspective on life and the way their life is set up, Uh right? So if you're close with your siblings, you could not imagine not being close, right? But some people are not close with their siblings. Mm -hmm. Some people are not close with their parents, their their, their family, biological or otherwise. Some people don't talk to their family at all. I didn't, and I, listen, I have a great Thanksgivings, but Thanksgiving is hard for people and Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's hard for some people who are not cool with with their family. So uh, her saying, uh, I, I, I don't speak to my sister like that. So because uh, in my mind, and my, if my brother's like, I haven't seen. If my brother said I yes. haven't seen Kev there or spoken to him. Exactly. You could you could be like, even if you or Josh were like, I ain't seen Kev. <laughs> right. There would be cause for concern. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So um, and I think the thing about the Kelly Price situation, you have the whole gamut of people who are genuinely concerned. Then kind of like, that's odd. Right. And then we're like, uh, you know what? At some point, I saw a lot of people like, girl, go with go, God. Go with God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, because it's it's in these moments you realize more and more you don't know these people. That's what it really boils you down to. You don't know we them. We don't know them. We might admire them. We might admire their work. But at the end of the day, we don't have intimate relationships with these people. And while our concern does seem genuine because we do admire them from afar, we have to realize our concern is only what we're being fed. Yes. It's not based on what we know to be fact. And I think people, you could be genuinely concerned and I, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. People connect with Kelly's music. We've known her, or known her through her music for 20 some odd years. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't think there's anything wrong with genuine concern. Right, right, right. Obviously, I'm, we're not saying go up to the, to the woman's house and knock on her neighbors. Mm-hmm. But I think that's a, a small majority, small, I'm sorry, small, small minority, minority. Uh-huh. people who are doing that. Uh, now that I'm seeing how the timeline uh, uh, of the events worked out, it makes more sense why people were like, I need to see your face. Mm. Uh, but if you're Kelly, she could also not be feeling great. She could have not had her hair done. Listen, Melissa, if her hair's not done, she's not going on camera. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> I don't care how well I feel. And she was struggling to breathe a little bit in the video. Oh, yeah, and stuff. she like, had that vid vid. She had that, like, uh, that, well, yeah, she died. So, like, it's going to be a while. If I die and come back, it's going to be a while before y'all get a vlog. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not going to be like, hey, guys, I hope you're having a blessed and marvelous and a prosperous Tuesday. I'm going to be like, y'all just going to have to wait a minute. And that's the thing that I, as a person of uh, interest, or a person with a large platform, mm. this is the part of the hardest part to navigate. The public, and Will Smith mentioned this in his, um, this little excerpt. Did you read that article in GQ? No, uh-uh. Okay, I, we should talk about it on the bonus episode. Um, but he had an article. He did a pretty in-depth article, actually. And if you knew Will Smith like we did, uh, the mystique of him in the 90s, you would never think this stuff would come out um, that he's talking about in his book and his article. He was saying the reason they had to do the red table, he was like, once the public gets a thought in their mind, Mm -hmm. it's nearly impossible to change the course of that thought. You know what I'm saying? People decide this is it now. And I don't, I will take no more stuff. And that's why I often have to speak on stuff that I don't want to speak on because people be like, nah, you said protect black women, but you didn't do this. Ah, 
ah, you're a liar. And then they just go down the yeah. path and you'd be like, you got to reel people in. And sometimes when people are reeled in, they'd be like, whoo, I was way off, huh? I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we like to, I mean, it, to the community of us, uh, to our, I guess, our, our defense, we didn't lost a lot of black folk that we love. <laughs> right. So I can get it. We like, now hold on. <laughs> Not Kelly. Where you at, Kelly? <laughs> Let me see your face. Cause we be lo- we been losing them for like, I mean, it's like gnats. Like that's what I feel like 2021 is just smacking gnats out of the air when it comes to the black folk that we love. So I can get why they were like, listen, all this bull crap y'all talking, we're Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, you better give us a picture or something. Put a filter on if you ain't got it on your hair. You know what's funny about that too? You ain't li- you ain't wrong. And uh, black black folk, boy, when we love you, we love you. Come on, Kelly somebody. Price, she got a special place. There's been a lot of artists. Mm-hmm. Kelly Price, we like get over here, girl. <laughs> right. We love right. you. I exactly. love your music. I love your face. Yeah. I love your name. Get over here and hug me. Yeah. We gonna love on you and, and stay close. <laughs> you stay and close. Black folks, and there's some a lot of legends that when black people get a hold to you, you you are when you reach legendary status Come in the black on. community, we they gonna pull up to your house and knock on your door. I'm always checking on Patty and Stevie. I'm always I'm always like, where they been at? Have they did they perform recently? I'm serious, because those are two. I just I need them to be here. Are they okay? That's why I'm glad I made that uh, video for Fred Hammond the other day. I was just thinking about it. His actually when his songs came on, I was like, well, that man, Fred. For four albums in a row. But I want him to see that while he's alive and yet able. Yes, but I, what is making me laugh is that, does have you told your people about what you did? What? what Years I did? ago. <laughs> <laughs> Guess that. Ah! Hey, Joe! I didn't say it! Hey, Joe! I didn't no, no, say no, we got, we got to save that. <laughs> no! No, we got to save that. <laughs> Moving on. Moving, Moving on. on. <laughs> Moving on. You can't tell Angel nothing. I <laughs> didn't say it out loud. You done teased it. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I they ain't putting that on the airways, but you got to record it. <laughs> I don't know. I can tell that about the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to say for the bonus if you want to tell it. It just seemed it seemed to fit so perfectly. That's why I started I'm such laughing. A hypocrite. <laughs> I'm such a hypocrite. Oh. Oh, so good. Oh, so good. We got to tell it on the bonus. Oh, on the bonus. I can't put it on a regular thing, but I'll tell it on the bonus. Put it on the bonus. Tell it on the bonus. Just for the Patreon. (laughs) On that table. Tell it on the bonus. Because it can can be public. All right, so um, this is an interesting story. How far are we away from the ad, Josh? Because I just don't want to interrupt this. Uh, about four minutes. Let's just do it now. Let's Angel. jump into this No cool this transition because I don't want to mess this up. Uh, no, no, we ain't got to be. Let's keep it sweet and short. And when I say sweet and short, I'm talking about honey because you can get some sweet discounts with just a click of a button. Yeah. Okay, so we all shopping online, right? Because it's just easier, it's safer, and then we have access to way more stores when we shop online. But then you get to that checkout and they like, you got a promo code and you're like, I want one. I want a promo. I want this to be cheaper than what it is right now. Well, honey, manually searches for coupon codes. Excuse me. You don't have to manually search because honey will do it for you. It scours the Internet. It's a free uh, browser extension, and it looks for uh, promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. So, just picture it in your mind. Go with me now. I'm following you. Angel. Okay, you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. You're like, ooh, I like this in pink. Ooh, in black. Oh, oh, and no, oh, my and goodness. this color, what I have. Oh, yes, raspberry That's sherbet. Raspberry sherbet. Like a mall. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little mall, right? And then when you go to check out, the honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds, and as honey searches for coupons it can fi- um, that it can find for that site. And if honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Ching, ching, chiddly, ching, ching, chiddly. I've told y'all this several times. We're still outfitting our house, getting furniture for the rooms, getting new lighting fixtures, and I do most of that shopping online. And when I tell you, 
Me and honey, honey, honey are over there <laughs> just saving me coins, okay? I was able to get a bunch of stuff for a Mars room at a discounted rate because honey was able to find coupons for me um, when I was buying his curtains as well as when I was buying some of the decorative pillows that go into his room. So uh, thank you, honey, okay? Honey has found it's over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. This is what we want you to do. If you haven't already um, gotten honey, you could be straight up missing out on some free savings. It's literally free, installs in a few seconds, and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash SK. SK! Again, that's joinhoney.com slash SK. SK! And now listen, I, I know it's the shopping season, but it's mm-hmm. also the season for a lot of uh, viruses to start picking up, and you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's about to get cold. That's when people be having colds and flus and all that stuff. So, what you want to do is prep your body and get it in fighting mode, and that is by fueling it with premium fuel and that fuel you could get from ritual ritual will give you the high quality nutrients and bio available forms that your body can actually use and it is a multi-vitamin that is vegan friendly it's clean i didn't told y'all this before now listen when you if you see yourself as a car okay mm-hmm. when you put that little cheap uh, fuel in it and you wonder why things ain't working right you you wonder why you, you, you're you uh, tired all the time yeah. you wondering why you can't focus it's because you're putting the cheap fuel in but when you put that high octane ritual in your body you're going to notice your focus you're going to notice that you got the energy that you need to get through the day you are angel okay. you're going to notice okay you're going to notice and that is why when you choose your multivitamin you need to be choosing something that gives you delayed release capsules and as well as the high quality nutrients that your body is able to understand that includes vitamin D okay the vitamin D3 come on now and it also fills in the gaps that your diet is not actually um, giving you all the nutrients that you need. That's what a multivitamin does. It fills in the gaps that your eating diet is not actually able to fulfill. And you're only having to take it in just two daily pills. It is available for women, men, and teens, and is scientifically developed to help support the different life stages, okay? Because the angel at 41 is not angel at 14. I can tell you that right now. Okay, right now. Your multivitamin is delivered to your door every month for free, um, for, with free shipping, excuse me, always. You can start snooze or cancel your subscription anytime. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll refund your first order. It's no problem. They will, Angel. So this is what we want you to do. Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering our listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit, visit, excuse me, ritual.com slash crew. Crew. That's K-R-E-W to start your ritual today. All right. All right, this is a wild thing that I did not know about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you, people of the crew, familiar with a term called soaking? Mm. Mm -hmm. Angel, Josh, before this this week, were you familiar with something called soaking? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, I saw this TikTok video going viral, uh, and Josh, you got to put the TikTok in here. Got you. It's in the docket. And text the, the, the text says, when your bestie is called in to soak in a BYU dorm and you have to jump hump for her. And I was like, I don't even know what that, I don't even know what is being said right. to me right now. Like, I don't even know what this is. Okay. So a Mormon woman uh, is explaining it here. Tell me about something that sounds made up, but is a hundred percent real. I'll go first. Young Mormons, usually like teenage to college student kind of age, um, are very sexually repressed. <laughs> because obviously they're not allowed to touch themselves. They're not allowed to look at anything sexual. They're not allowed to even like hug or kiss anybody for an extended period of time. But sometimes it gets to a point where they just can't help themselves. So soaking is a thing that happens. And that is basically where the boy puts his penis inside the girl. Mm-hmm. And then they just hold still. They can have temperature. No thrusting, because that would be sex. But if you put it in and you just sit there and don't move, it doesn't count. It sounds like I'm making that up, but I promise you that is a thing that happens in Provo, Utah. 
So soaking, Ooh. people are asking if it's soaking or sulking. Soaking. S O A. Soaking in soaking king. in the anointing. Yeah. I was about to say mm. not any type of uh mm. it was gonna be the real words. It's taking, <laughs> it's taking a dip in. Wow. Uh, it's called taking the temperature. Uh you just put that, you know, you know, you put the helmet, a little bit of that your shaft in, and you sit, and that's called soaking. She didn't say just a little bit. You, 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 yeah, you put, I just guess you put the whole thing. You put the, I was the, gonna say, no, we gonna do it. You gonna do it right. Just a touch. <laughs> you put the whole thing in and you just sit there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, the jump hump takes soaking to the next level because the young Mormons have figured out you got, you <laughs> somebody that. else got to come in the room. Yeah. So you can come in the room. Hey! Okay? Hey, hey, jumps come on, the on in the room. <laughs> Don't do it now. Damn. I wonder if you got. I wonder if you got like a list of top five. Like, no, nah, I really would take what's his name because yeah. they they be they they know how to. Uh, yeah, you know, somebody with some real weight. Mm -hmm. Get oh, that jumpers? big in. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I should be caught in the it? jump. <laughs> what care sitting around two sixty five? <laughs> no, your your feet might start hurting. I need somebody yeah. got some longevity to it. Mm -hmm. I need somebody with energy and weight. Listen, they got a starting five. Listen, that yeah, you're right. I I can't imagine me acting. I probably get the call, but it's like moving. Yeah. I can't jump uh, up for you. To, I got class in the morning. Guys. I got a, I got a final at eight a.m. You gotta. I'm surprised they haven't like. I would be done constructed a <laughs> vibrating bed. I was like, oh, somebody just hit the switch. <laughs> Somebody what did somebody say? We say? should do ask a soaker. <laughs> that super soak that that <laughs> hole has a whole new thing. A whole new soak. Super, super soak that hole. Mm, Listen, I'm, the thing about you got in my experience, you got to get that helmet rolling. Okay, if you're just rolling. soaking, if that helmet ain't rolling, that you're just taking the temperature. Rolling. Believe. I'm not a thermometer. Okay, you can't just get that. I mean, and and we know women most of their um most of their uh, sensors, mm -hmm. pleasure sensors, are not up in the in the vault. Mm -hmm. They're at the they're at the doorbell. The doorbell, well, but it depends. If you smash the doorbell, if you're going up one time, nobody's feeling nothing. But no, if Some your body like penetration more. If you but not still penetration, Josh. Well, not still, but <laughs> but depending on the. But that's the, the, why you need a good that's, jumper. That's what I'm saying. You need that starting five. On speed dial. I, this sounds like the freakiest mess I've ever heard of. It sounds so freak because the fact of the matter is, it is three people involved in this sexual act. What the, is it called when you when you watch somebody have sex? Voyeur, uh, no, uh, you are uh, a, ah! Cock, um, what? Where's Goody Howard? Hold on, what was that? Wait a minute, I think it starts with a C. No, but what did you say? Uh, c um... <laughs> Goody Howard. He said a word. It's a, uh, <laughs> me, I was just having cuckold. this. Cuckold. No, that's if. That's no, no, else. no. That's when. <laughs> no, cuckold is when I, you like Kevin, something. No. Do not look it up right now. I promise you. C -C no, I, I, I promise you. you I can tell not right. you. Yes, with your wife. That's you, a jump humper. No. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because no. They, they would be doing the without. You and Melissa could be soaking and you could have a random person jumping. That does not make them a cuckold. Just make them a jump hold. <laughs> Okay, I guess it's voyeurism. Yes, that's okay. I said it right. A voyeur. I was mm -hmm. like, I be knowing these sex. How things. do you jump? Because when you're you jump on the bed like this. You, <laughs> no, you yes. Know, do you jump in a sensual way? Or you it's easier if you put. Like, it's easier if you put music on. Is that too sensual? Oh God! It's easier if you put music on. I hear. Like, are you like? Yes, you that's yes. I want energy. I want you synchronized. Not <laughs> heel. Sit down. I know. You gonna hurt or yourself. Like, well, oh, I'm almost done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. No, I'm surprised us save ah, ah. kids didn't come up with this. You're because I save kids didn't come up with this because they would just be on the bed like this. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Shouting. <laughs> yeah. That's ah. what we're doing. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> Listen, here's how I feel. This is why I grew up in black church. Full sin, full <laughs> repentance. <laughs> if, I, if I'm gonna ask for repentance anyway, yes. I'm a dip in the anointing. Let me get all the way in sin. Oh my god! You ain't god. got to jump for me. 
Uh, he died for my sins. I'm going to be at church on Sunday regardless. Anyway, if I'm going to feel bad during the altar call, I'm going to feel good now. If, come I, on. if I'm not soaking, what is this all for? <laughs> <laughs> Got to come with the pumps. I was hoping my girlfriend, I texted my Mormon friend. She hasn't texted me back to be like, girl, is this what you was doing when you were younger? <laughs> she black girl? No. Uh, she white. All my Mormon said, friends are uh, white. No. My wife, my wife, Mormon friends are white too. Um, <clears throat> No, but it, it is crazy. The things we will do to justify doing what we've been told was wrong. Like, this is one thing I'll say. Us Christian girls... The reason why we be ending up pregnant and being with a teen mom, because we don't want to prepare for our sin. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because that means you're thinking about it. Right. But if I, if it just happened and the skeet skeet happened and I did not protect myself from it, I can say I did not think it, it was going planned. to happen. It, it was not planned. planned. It was not planned. Where True. everybody else is like girls who are, you know, actively having sex are like, oh, no, I talked to my mom on birth control mm -hmm. or he I made sure he mm -hmm. had a condom where we just like, I, I if we you want to look in the condom, it means you're getting just ready be to praying sin. on their downfall. Just be like, <laughs> if God don't want them in my life, he they would be removed. And yes. I've kill him, Jesus. That's, That's what, what I be doing. Can you imagine going to church and be like, any of y'all been in here soaking? <laughs> Yeah, we that's dry hunching, but that's way no, that's hunching. not dry. Yeah, though. that's not, not dry. Uh, no, it's that definitely means not. you ain't got no foreplay. You just you just going. You just uh, foreplay, foreplay was happening. There's definitely what are they foreplay. doing riding around on them bikes. I hope you get that thing warm from you when you riding mm, on that bike. They talking oh, about no, wait, it. That's Jehovah's Witness. No, that's Mormons too, huh? Yeah, they all like to do outreach. Wait, but the women don't ride on the bikes and knock on the doors, do they? I uh, you know, talking about the of the Mormons? Yeah. Their outreach, I feel like no, I've had Mormon men. Mormon girls uh uh walk. The thing is is that I don't think they're allowed to be by themselves with the opposite sex. Mm. They're gonna be soaking. That's right. They're gonna be like, I'm knocking on a different That's door. why there's always party of three. One of them's a soaker. <laughs> The other one's the... I would love to find out if somebody is like, man, you, if you want to jump humper, you got to get Big Reggie. Oh, yeah. Big I Reggie. Probably would. <laughs> Big Reggie. Big Reggie going to jump humper. <laughs> he ain't going to take but seven jumps. He got a whole thing going. He knows where to jump on the bed. What mattresses are best for soaking? Oh, you definitely don't want one of these memory foams no. because you need the spring. No. Mm -mm. You know, you got to go old school mm -mm. mattress. Yeah, you got to go this... down a mattress, people. You be right. like, listen, I, got me a, I need me a jump hump and soaking mattress. No mattress that comes rolled will work for soaking. Soaking. Absolutely not. Can you soak on the floor? You mm -hmm. can't. Oh, absolutely not. It's got to be but a bed. You can soak on the floor. I guess you can't jump hump. Yeah, right. The jump hump is the part. Trampoline actually might be ideal. I was about to say, they're renting out oh, sky zones. No they're renting out whole sky zones. There you go. <laughs> For anniversaries. <laughs> they got 16 just just... rows of soaking going. <laughs> are you in Are you in different positions in the in the jump hump? Which is which probably ideal. Limited. They're probably limited. I think they That's are what missionary probably became only doing the thing. like... Missionary. I mean, we got to spread the gospel. Because yeah, they be going on missions. They, <laughs> they do. They be going on missions. I can't Months believe. Months at a time. Soaking. There's no way you're going to be in a doggy style like, oh, we need a jumper. you just going to go ahead and finish that out mm -hmm. yourself. We got a jumper. You're going to finish that out yourself. I wonder if God is just like, you You guys are just idiots. Uh, absolutely. He has is. to be like, this is, y'all really, this is dumb. Yes. This yes. is y'all are really dumb for real. I think he absolutely feels that, believes that, thinks that, and says it to us on a regular basis. You know, God is all about the heart and the posture. He ain't about the fine print. You gonna be in heaven in line? You think God gonna be like, you know what? I had you pegged for hell. Yes. I really did. But when y'all figured out that if, if you just soaked, yeah, you know that's not it. Safe. Don't count. But then I thought, okay, they got me. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I had thought of that. <laughs> I didn't As think about God, it. the Creator of the universe. I never thought just slide in and hold. That don't count a second. That and don't I, count. Y'all, you got me once. You know, fool me once. Shame on me. Okay, but then, <laughs> y'all, as you evolved, mm. somebody said, what if somebody jumps? jumps. Mm -hmm. And that's two things I had thought of with the sex. Ever. Now, you get on in heaven. You, you in you. on the technicality. Come on. <laughs> Come on in. Come on you in, You think somebody. God is really like, ah, that's... Ah, you got me. I didn't think of that. You got That's me. That's crazy. I thought of, I thought of everything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought of technology that y'all could get from a spaceship out of Earth atmosphere, but I never <laughs> thought. I never thought about soaking. I mean, the line, like to blur that line, like if you really feel like, hey, this is the thing that's going to condemn us. 
and to be like, but you can be on this side of the line if you just don't actively uh, thrust uh, your hips. <laughs> That's the sin. <laughs> just, just stay locked this up. This right here. The sin isn't the entry. Oh. No. It's, it's this. Oh. It's if you don't go like this, you are good. Yeah. <laughs> Straight <laughs> hips. Right. Just don't move. Just but then don't. When, the, when you, you know, see the promised land, are you remaining still? Or are you, <coughs> who I moved. <laughs> like, at what point is the jump humper? Are you, are you sneaking a little pump in on the jump hump? Are you like, sure. Oh, that was that was them, but it was a I'm bit sure of me. none of the no none of the people laying in the bed soaking are actually just waiting on the jump humper. The jump, they are like the person is jumping. They're like, oh my god, your jumps are amazing. <laughs> Jesus was like, I was crucified are- <laughs> for this. <laughs> your jumps, you're jumping so great. Ah, uh, they Chris are. Cross is making a killing in the morning <laughs> oh, community. Oh yeah, they've got full blown gymnasts coming. <laughs> they got Dominique Dawes out of retirement, and she is doing back tucks and all the things on the bed. When do you call the jump humper in? Are you already in mid soap? No, you got you oh, got to no, be like, oh, this dinner's going well. Let me tell a, you what. This is a double date. We started the day off they, together. They got a little they they got a little uh, energy popping off when they saw the dipped Italian beef at Portillo. So oh, like, yeah. oh hey. You know what? I know these people better? are Mormon. Let Somebody me tell you what. Somebody was vibrating this table. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. They definitely this this is a planned. This is not something you fall into. This is a planned outing. <laughs> You got oh, to yeah, rent the hotel. This is like premeditated murder. This is the ah. dorm room, Angel. Oh, is the dorm room? The BYU. Dorm room. This is at BYU. Apparently, a lot of times, uh, people think if you have no P and G, you're a virgin. Oh, that is exactly what I don't know. But people stuff. who don't think that that aren't Christian. Eating cooch, mm. sucking peen, handies, dirty Sanchez, rim job, dirty Sanchez. Yeah, rusty trombone. As long as there's no P in the G. <laughs> Rusty trombone. Oh, my. Well, because that's something that's focused on when it comes to church. Why do you think if you put it in this whole... Ver- there's Okay, there's the mouth, there's the cooch, and the butt. Well, Why it's like do you the, think God no, was like... No, because it's like the final boss. <laughs> if you think about it, it's like different levels in Mario. Why would God be like, hey, ah, uh-uh, not that uh, one. It's uh, all... The other or the other? It you is, go through the second floor window, you go round back. You don't go in the front door. That, that, that's for Mary. It I'm is all the about door. the the possibility of actually procreating. That's the that's the whole premise of virginity, okay. and the mm. whole power behind it. That is why when people are like, I don't understand why Christian girls they only care about this is why that's all we care about is because we don't want to be sat down because we got somebody's child in our stomach. Because a lot of times the woman takes she takes way more she blame. She takes all the blame. Blame. It all could, the blame. <laughs> all of it. I've seen women in church. Both of them went to our church. I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Both the parties went to our church. Both were in ministry. They done soaked the, the traditional way. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no jump humper needed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She got pregged out. He stayed on the drums. She mm-hmm. had to get off the children's church ministry. Of course. Until she gave birth to that baby. He was, he beat the drums and then he beat, he beat her. Yeah. He beat, yeah. He beat, beat it, beat it up. up. So that is why we be focused on the P and the V is because that is the thing. We could be having sex all day long and mm-hmm. no one know. But if I show up pregnant, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to hell. That's what that's the that's the way it's been put. And the thing about it, if you really like the thing that's interesting is everything in the today has happened in the Bible days. So we think we'd be coming up with new stuff. Mm-hmm. They was doing all the stuff. Right. In the story of Lot, uh Sodom and Gomorrah, them men wanted his sons. Yeah, they did. They said he give. was like daughters. They were like, mm him. Give us him. him. Booty, 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 <laughs> rocking booty everywhere. Day. Yeah. <laughs> Give us the butt, man. Absolutely. We don't want your daughter. She's like, man, take the daughter. Ah, I don't want lying. This new booty's gospel? <laughs> yeah, I don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want one eye. I don't want sliver. I don't know. But, you know, they didn't really, other than like in Psalms, they didn't really talk about, like the Bible doesn't talk about condemning women <laughs> for ch- testing the mic, for doing a mic check. They don't. They testing don't. the mic is hilarious. I remember wow. the first time I heard somebody say that. Oh, my God. Yeah, this girl don't. said singing never... to the mic. You know, I sing to the mic. And I was like, well, of course you're singing. Uh, <laughs> you are not talking about <laughs> the mic. She they said, don't. lady, y'all better sing into the mic. Mm-hmm. Sing until the Lord a new song. <laughs> 
Sing unto the Lord all the earth. The Bible does the Bible does not, or at least you know what we read, the translation we have, it does not talk about condemning women for being all sloppy, giving sloppy toppy. So that we be like, okay, so we can't get in trouble for that, right? <laughs> Just it's just the cool, it's just the hymen that's got to stay in place. But if my tonsils been knocked to the back of my head, ah! I'm good, right? God is not pleased with us. If my tonsils been knocked to the back of my head. I'm good. I'm is it? good. You gave me a tonsil. You know I've been catching. <laughs> I've been catching from time to time. So we straight, right? Because mm-hmm. I mean, it is very confusing as a church girl. You're just like, what can I? What? And then, but then as a black church girl, it's really confusing because. Oral sex for a black girl was like, you don't do that, or you Mm-mm. one of them nasty white girls. That's what the white girls was doing. That was the white girl. I, I came up under that same regime. Yeah, because I remember having a conversation with a white girl. She was like, wait a minute. You feel like it's more personal to have oral sex than regular sex? I was like, yes. I, say, I say hi with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I praise his name with my mouth. Right. My coochie usually is not involved in my daily activities other than peeing. But I be like, hi, how you doing? Kissing people on the cheek. To let somebody (laughs) in here? This is so important. We always end up here. Hi with my mouth. (laughs) Now there's been a penis in there. I pray with my mouth. Hey. How am I gonna say hallelujah you, you with that in my mouth? Hallelujah is the high you is that peeing on your breath? You right. saying hallelujah? You That's, can't say you hallelujah. Pee in your head. You got suck the pee. You got a thirty six hour window. You right. gotta let that off. The Lord can't hear my prayer because it's blocked. By it's all muffled. The, the, the dick muffled by the sea. <laughs> he can't hear it. He's like, I can't hear you. <laughs> can't hear you. That's 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 what had me jacked up as a black girl. A black Christian girl. I was like, what do the only thing I had left was clothes burning. That's it. I was like, well, then I'm just going to have to drag this thing on somebody's leg like a dog trying to clean its butt on the carpet. That that little move. But we knew, listen, we knew what time it was as church girls. We knew we had to be real slick about it because we knew that we were going to be thrown under the bus if anything happened. We knew what time it was also because we had movement watches and movement. I'm going to tell you what (laughs) is some sexy watches. You feel me? I got this dope white one, y'all, that is just, ooh, you don't even understand. It is, I don't even have to wear it as a watch. I can just wear it as a bracelet. It is so, (laughs) it is so pretty. It's white. um, It's not porcelain. It's like a shiny, like, white enamel. It is the prettiest watch you all would ever want to see. And then the gold detail it. (sighs) I'll be looking real expensive when I wear this watch. Um, They also, movement has also expanded to um, blue light uh, glasses. Since a lot of us are working from home and we're standing in front of our computers a lot, you want to be able to protect your eyes from your screens. But uh, what I also love about movement is that um, the designs are like really clean and they're very original and they have unexpected colors. So when you wear one of their watches, it's not like you're just wearing a watch. You're wearing a really sleek statement piece, um, which I'm really all into nowadays. Y'all know I'll be trying to kill it every now and again. And movement. Do, Thank you. you killing it. People been saying that. They've been saying it because I've been doing it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's minimalist jewelry and it has um, styles that are really they're they're like essentials to your wardrobe and they don't break the budget and they're all designed out out of their uh california headquarters um so movement watches have the look and quality of a 400 500 watch uh you're paying for at a department store price and it cuts the uh price uh, to a fraction of the cost they were built online and own their own process from start to finish You'll get a beautiful watch shipped right to your door for free. And if you don't love it, you can ship it back for free. I'm telling you, go onto their website and you can see how gorgeous their watches are. They are so super duper pretty, so sleek. Marcus tried to steal my watch and I said, I'll hurt you. You move away, back up from the watch. Mm -hmm. If you want to elevate your look with style that doesn't break the bank, then join the movement and get 15% off today for free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. Again, that's mvmt.com slash crew. 
Crew, Crew with, with a K. K. When we think movement, really, y'all check them out because their stuff is super sexy. Movement.com slash SK. Sexy to the Mormons. Mm. They've been doing some movement. Yeah. Moving on. <clears throat> There's nothing we can type top. I say hi with my mouth. Just there's just nothing. This is a really interesting proposition I saw on Twitter. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, me, you, and Josh, we talk about music a lot in the stage crew, big fan of music. Uh, Devon Terrell, he said, This is strictly my opinion mm-hmm. on music. Please be advised. Listen to this and tell me what you think, guys. Price of music streaming. I think the price of music streaming, your monthly subscription yep. should be. F- way higher. We don't deserve the entire catalog of music in the world for $10 and off. I'm agree. so sorry. I, As a kid, I couldn't afford the CDs, right? Also, I had to really choose what I've liked. Mm-hmm. And when I bought it, that tangible thing, it was admit more. more so valuable. I would rather somebody that can't afford it make the decision to say, I'm going to spend my 17 on this album. Mm-hmm. Guess what? They're going to listen. Mm-hmm. They're not going to just toss it to the side. No. There's a, you gave my, you put mm-hmm. the value back. I think the price of music streaming your monthly subscription yep. should be f- way higher. We don't deserve the entire catalog of music in the world for ten dollars a month. I I'm agree. So sorry. I, As a kid, I couldn't afford the CDs, right? Uh-huh. So I had to really choose what I've liked. Mm-hmm. And when I bought it, that tangible thing, it was admit more. It's more so valuable. I would rather somebody that can't afford it make the decision to say, "I'm going to spend my seventeen on this album." Mm-hmm. Guess what? They're going to listen. Mm-hmm. They're not going to just toss it to the side. No, from the there's a- no podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people in the stage crew are, are reading about it. Uh, what are your thoughts, Angel? No. <laughs> That's my thoughts. No. I, um, you know, as an artist myself, not a musical artist, but as someone who creates art for consumption, I understand the need to want to have a monetary value put on your work so that you can feel as though as it is more appreciated. Yeah. But if that is the only way you can f- figure out whether or not your uh, art is valued or not, you are possibly always going to be wanting more. You're always going to be wanting. I, what I feel like streaming has done, has it has made music more accessible to the masses. And that, I feel like, is more important than an individual giving you more money to show their appreciation for your work. Okay. Um, I do, I, I, you know, the certain artists that I love... I will still go and purchase the the hard copy of whatever it is that they are putting out. That includes uh, authors as well. I don't just always do ebooks. I like a actual physical book in my hand, but I don't think we can ever replace the way that now people who would not have been able to listen to certain music or even know that certain music was out because streaming platforms puts the whole catalog on there. Yeah. And then also, I, I think the audience gets to be more truthful about what they feel about the music. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, I don't want to listen to your whole album because your whole album does not move me. It might have moved you when you made it. Yeah, yeah. But I only like four of the 12. To, right, and you used to be stuck with an entire album if you only liked one song on it. You're like, yeah. oh, the rest of this is It's cat. trash, yeah. It's just... I, so I completely agree with Angel. Honestly, yeah, having access to all those artists the thousands and hundred thousands of artists that are on these platforms, of course, um, does the price breakdown of ten dollars a month with the accessibility of all that match up? No, not at all. But you're also not listening to everybody, mm-hmm. so you're still going to listen to. It, it also depends on what type of uh, consumer you are. Too, are you only going to be listening to one artist forever and listening to their back catalog that's available? Maybe, but also if you just let music play. You uh, per Angel as well. There's playlists that are based on artist discovery, so you can learn more about based off of what you've listened to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't do that by going to Blockbuster, not Blockbuster, by going to Best, Best Buy, Buy. How it used to be, um, there's an R&B section, and you just still take a risk by buying an entire CD, but you might be stuck twenty dollars out. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. With music that you might not ever listen to after you crack it open once. Yes. Yeah. Now, what I do agree with him, <clears throat> both of you guys made fantastic points. I do agree that. In the age of buying music, you were more careful with what you bought Mm -hmm. and you appreciated what you bought more. I think people casually listen to artists they probably would never casually listen to, like you guys said. Um, I think the thing about it is, for as far as I can remember, everything's been bootlegged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when when we were coming up, uh, the bootleg was 
uh, having your radio uh, ready to do a uh, stop and record mm-hmm. and waiting for the song you wanted. Yep. And then on the radio and then you wait for the person to stop and you hit that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Record that on the radio. Okay. That song over. And we basically manually made our own mixtapes. Yep. Right. Yep. In my life, I never really could afford, <laughs> afford to buy music mm-hmm. I, and by and large. Yeah. So I, I started off listening to what my parents had for free. Mm-hmm. Listen to the radio. This is why the radio was such a big deal uh, before the Internet, mm-hmm. because that's how people heard music. Exactly. Because this is how I knew so much about old school music, too, because that's all my dad was listening to. All my mom was listening. To. That's mm-hmm. why my sons listened to <laughs> driving Joe to soccer practice the other day. And Devin Campbell came on and Joe's just in the back of his phone. Can we talk? <laughs> yes. For a minute. minute. And I'm talking. Uh, Joe has a nice little voice. If you don't look at he him. Is, no. If he's he has not, if he thinks nice nobody's voice. paying attention. Oh, he, girl, I want to. I mean, he's just back there grooving. I'll never get to hear him sing a whole song because you know me. <laughs> I can sing. <laughs> and it'll be over with. Right. <laughs> so Joe at, at, at tw- uh, 13. He, he, at his age, is not going out of his way to say, let me listen to Tevin Campbell. Mm-hmm. He, like Josh, is only listening to, because I listen to 94.7, the, the way, way. Hey, the hits of today and yesterday. I love me a good hits of today and yesterday. Oh, yeah. uh, so in my experience, I went from stop and record mm-hmm. on my radio to, I remember when music videos came out and I had a VCR. Come on, record that thing. I would go thing. to 106 in Park or uh, TRL mm-hmm. and wait for the song to come on. Stop. Yep. Me and my friends would share CDs. Mm-hmm. Right. I had the Rough Riders anthem. I remember I had bought. Um, I don't know how I came in contact with it. I might have just took it from somebody else. I had the um, Snoop's Doggy Style. Oh uh, my God! Ooh, ooh, yeah. ooh. Sin. I, listen, I'm talking about on the church van. One, two, three. Sin. Into the folk. Snoop Doggy Doggy. Dog. Right. So my my later on in high school. We would be like, yo, let me get that uh, Rough Rider album. I'll give you this one. Mm-hmm. And then we would go home. And then my first crimes were Napster and LimeWire. Destroyed yes. uh, two computers. Absolutely. Downloading all those music. Well, LimeWire was to that, great. Burning that CD. So, and then my mom had Finger Hut. Remember that? No. Finger Hut in that? Columbia. You paid monthly and they would just send you CDs. Oh. Right? So that's how you oh, never they were heard ahead of the time. Oh, yeah. They were streaming before Ooh, streaming. No, I knew about Bear Share. Uh, about Finger Bear Hut. Share. No, mm-hmm. stream, Finger Hut was, they literally sent you the CDs, not physical. This oh, is, yeah, they literally sent you the CD. So my mom had Finger Hut. She joined that club. That's how she got her albums. Uh, we burnt CDs. Uh, then YouTube, we listened to stuff. And then Apple and, uh, well, actually, before Apple, I was on Pandora free. Mm-hmm. Um, Pandora oh, Radio. Yeah. And Pandora I was like, well, Radio. This has good. changed the game. Yeah. Um, and you can't soak to that though because ads come out. Yeah. You have that person talk to you about insurance. <laughs> it's <laughs> me coming well, in. Hey, hey Polly. <laughs> hey, are you in your car? Are you, so- down again? are you soaking? Are you soaking right now? It looks like you might need a sham wow because it looks like somebody <laughs> oh might be wet. God. Are your knees hurting from jump humping down in BYU? Get the new <laughs> ace bandages <laughs> just for jump humpers like you. Give your friends the soak of their lifetime. Oh, I yes. Jump, I thought the jump humping was out for me. Mm-hmm. Um, not with no, the also, ace bandages. If, have you, you rolled your ankle in a, in a soaking event gone wrong? <laughs> Come down to personal injury, <laughs> injury lawyer Bob Telflon right here on Main Street. Bob <laughs> Telflon? You can sue them for rolling your ankle. They shouldn't have been soaking anyway. anyway. But anyway. anyway. So Apple Music, uh, I pay the family plan so me and Melissa and the boys can listen to music, but it's really just me. Actually, I realize that Melissa does sometime. Um, so we, we all make a good point. But the thing I do agree with him about. Oh, you had a point. But listen, uh, here's the we, thing I do. Uh, well, well, the, the point I was going to make is mo- stuff has been bootlegged forever. Uh-huh, go ahead. This is probably the first time people are actually paying for it. Mm-hmm. As an artist and creator, when you're Drake and Cardi and uh, Khalid, when you're streaming like crazy, it's actually pretty lucrative, oh, right? Yeah. When you're not, it's not. They, and, I mean, and you feel the way he feels. You, but yes, and you feel the way he feels. The thing I want to say though, go ahead. Um, Just know I got. I, I want to say two things. I think when you actually physically bought that CD, you you did more research. And you appreciated more, and you listened to music more, and you also did. Also, didn't... artists weren't getting the full twenty; they still got to recoup. Well, I wasn't even going to say that. When you are a small artist, no matter the way the internet is or not, small artists don't. 
if you sell your CD and you was in Lexington, Black Rose, right? Mm-hmm. And TLC selling all those albums. All in all, the record label's always getting the most. Remember, uh, TLC was saying they were getting like 14 cents mm-hmm. uh, an album. It just seems like the record label has always found a way oh, to yeah. make sure you don't get paid. Absolutely. From streaming oh, to yeah. vinyls. Absolutely. In this right? lifetime, some artists will not recoup for another 100 years. Anita Baker, like had, she said she had to outlive. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Outlive her contract. She did. Right. Black folks be dying. Yes. They a lot of times they don't <laughs> get to kill the net. <laughs> they don't even get to outlive, yeah. and sometimes they never get a chance to own their masters back again. So I think the point I give, I agree with him as an artist. You're screwed. The record industry is going to screw you no matter how. Uh-huh. Anytime somebody pays for something up front, they always gonna get their money back times ten. Bro, they're going. This public. is oh go. I'm sorry. This is the reason why I'm like still booty, is that you aren't gonna be making a lot of money anyway. Regardless. Even if you're a small artist and you're selling these things out of the trunk of your car, you're still not gonna be selling at the same rate as someone who's big. And the fact of the matter is, this is still more of a benefit because back in the day, it was hard to break through. As an artist. Yeah. So we were only going to the uh, record stores to buy the people that were big or that the record label said, these are the big people. These are the yeah. people. They weren't pushing for no uh, Devin Terrell. They have been like, yeah, yeah. we got, uh, what's this little short man that be singing? 24 Karat Magic. What's his name? Bruno Mars. Mars. We got Bruno Mars. We don't need you. Go on ahead and sit on the shelf somewhere. <laughs> but with the, with, with streaming services... While, yes, the streaming services still push who are popular towards the front, you still have the ability to reach an audience. You still have the ability to do your own marketing plan. And there is a place where your audience can easily access your music. Yeah. Where before, unless I'm by the trunk of your car where I could buy your CD. Right. How am I right. going to get you it? You still have to be discovered, number one, which yeah. you can take longer time to do that organically on your own. Or you can take a quick whatever the... Brett is it could be like a quick 50 up front to get signed by label to then push your music into the bigger playlist yes but then you take the 50 up front and you're not getting paid for a long time right right first of all josh knows a lot about music he does a lot here's Dave. what i think here i agree this with him as Bruno an Mars artist dances. from <laughs> from, from, from <laughs> an artist point of view i get it right you're screwed from an artist point of view the problem is most people don't think like artists they think like consumers and they want to as a as a person paying you are more like ah sucks to be you because i want it 100%. for free so um, the point I was going to make before that was this. Oh, um, see, I think I'm thinking of it from both as an artist and as a consumer. How would you? How's it beneficial as an artist? Oh, because people can see it. Because people can actually discover it. That you. was my yeah, point. Right. So That's, Josh sends yeah. me uh, Tim's album, right? Tim's is the uh, Nigerian C- R&B singer Tim's who's Johnny on Johnny Essence, Johnny. right? Uh, love her voice. Mm-hmm. Absolutely love her. And she's on Drake's album. Mm. Josh sent me her album mm-hmm. on Apple. This is the blessing of of the internet for the mm-hmm. consumer. Right. He sends me this, and I'm like, press perfect. play easily. Press play, right? Love this album. Right. Listen to it this morning. Zay Zay's in the car with me, and I'm like, yo, you heard this, Tim's? You know, crazy things are happening. Crazy things are That's happening. That's why you keep seeing this. Crazy okay. I was like, why do you keep It's a vibe. Uh-huh. Crazy so in 1990, there is honestly very little chance that I'm going to walk into a record store and buy the artist that's featured on the song I like. Right. You know what I'm saying? Buy, buy their album. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, if you're small, that's what the internet has given us is yeah. you, if I wanted to release an album, say Unruly Cousins, me and Angel want to release an album that Josh is going to get us some music for. I can get it on Apple Music. Easily. I can just get it on Apple. Yes. I don't have to get a... From the it, house. From my from house. You right. might not have the best ago, marketing plan for it, but you can do that. I yes. can do it, right? I can record it. I can mix it, master. I can learn how to do all that on the internet. Put it out. Somebody in Iowa right now or a stage crew, wherever they are, if I said Unruly Cousins album is out right now, without a dime, they can essentially pay me Come on. just by pressing play. Yeah. That's something that wouldn't have been able to happen right. 20 if years ago. If I sent ago. you a link 20 years ago or a, uh, a photo of, hey, this album is good, the chances of you going to the store and buying that album to push play on it off a, off a cosign 
Yeah. I would be a lot more concise and particular with the music that I would send people. You know this what? The thing you made me realize, too, I agree with that. Mm. The problem really is the record industry takes too much. Listen. That's the real problem. It's the real problem. We learned about this service. on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air when he was trying to make Ashley a huge star. When she was saying, God, make up your mind. Before she even had a chance to blow up. Yeah. She didn't make no money. She made no money. Let me tell you what, too. Grass is not greener. They can change the streaming model as much as they want. These labels are still going to eat first. Oh, yeah. You just went public last yeah. week for $50 billion? Mm-hmm. And the agencies are probably going to go public after this big buyout that CAA yeah. did of ICM. CAA just bought ICM. That leaves, I mean, ICM wasn't even a big three anyway. Mm-hmm. But was it CAA at that bottom or WME? Yeah. CAA. 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 Uh, they passed on me that they bought ICM. They'll pay. They're on they the passed list. on me. They didn't even do me the Hollywood disservice of not telling me. They they emailed back. It's going to be a pass. And I was like. <laughs> you like, no, just, just forget And it was a black woman me. agent. Oh, I, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I, got, I was like. Huh. That was for your benefit. You I couldn't even get back. I, 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 I said it's for black people anyway. No, it was for <laughs> your benefit that she passed. You got to realize that, though. Uh, I hope so. She would have did nothing with you. Yeah, that's probably true. Nothing, and that's what they be doing. But no, I will always <laughs> make my eyes small. <laughs> I will always see streaming, digital, all of this. As much as I love in person interaction, as much as I love live performances, as yeah. much as I love all of that as an artist, I still will say, as an artist, not just as a consumer, that if my art is that, like, I feel like that important to me, and if my art needs to be in the uh, hands of other people for them to see and experience it. I will always go for accessibility and allowing people to actually have access to my art versus it having to be so precious that only a fraction of those people will get to actually touch the art. That's just me as an artist. Some people are more precious Mm -hmm. about their stuff and it's just like only the deserving. Yeah. Can have this, and I've never been that way when it comes. Absolutely. To Here's what I think. Here's what I do. Uh, and somebody said this in the comments, and I agree. Uh, they said consumers have to recognize they need to practice equi- equitable consumerism through the industry um, because the industry needs to be reformed. And what I think that means for me, like when I found uh, Toby, right? I found Toby on Instagram because Spice had did a video with Toby, mm-hmm. and I didn't know who Toby was, but I knew who Spice was. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, this is this is kind of fire, right? Mm-hmm. Clicked on Toby's uh, Instagram. Oh, he's got all kinds of music. Mm-hmm. He posts his music videos on Instagram. At the time, he was doing Get Twisted Sundays. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm like, oh, this is great. But when I find an artist that I love, if you're selling something, I'm buying, right? right? I get the music for free, but I'll buy the hoodie or the T-shirt. Or you come to my city, um, or if I have a chance to go see you, I'll go, go there in person. I think that's the... Uh, that's another way we can say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out of my way mm-hmm. to show you that I support you. Um, but also, I also have this disposable income that also mm-hmm. takes time to. Yes, mm-hmm. that takes time. You're not just gonna if you hear an artist for the first time, you might be like interested in them. But if they do something consistent, you're like, okay, I relate to them, I resonate with this music. Then you become like a genuine fan. Then you'll be more opt to. Uh, go to their show and buy a piece because yeah. you want to represent their brand as well. That, that Absolutely. That's not overnight. Well, that's the thing. Like, Tim's, for example, uh, hadn't heard of her until mm-hmm. Essence. Didn't know she had an album till Josh mm-hmm. sent it to me. Mm-hmm. Press play. You know what? I went on Twitter. Yo, this Tim's album is amazing. Mm-hmm. People are like, oh, I hadn't heard. People right now are like, let me check it out. Yeah. So uh, that's another way you can support. That's why I always say you can support me without money, mm-hmm. right? Because YouTube pays us for... Uh, Oh, uh, watching this video, mm-hmm. you can support by watching it, telling somebody, downloading an Apple. Like we, we're in renegotiation for our podcast. We got a meeting today. Are we? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And as people listen and download, that is then leveraged mm-hmm. in ad space, right? But even if you say I'm gonna use Honey or uh, Blue Chew or whatever the case is, there's a lot of different ways to support. I think uh, the issue is the record label probably could pay more. In places like Title, uh, they pay more than I think Spotify. I believe Spotify pays the least. Well, that's um, because Title was created by an artist. Right, there's, right. There's a difference. Uh, but Title's also more expensive, and people be like, nah, though. I, uh, I know. And but I, even then, you pay that. more, it's it's a difference of like 20 cents or 25 cents. It's not uh, at the most, too. It's not like, a oh, this 
platform pays ten dollars per song and this one pays a right right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. fractions and fractions i mean i i should be using title just because it started was started by a, a black man but apple is just easier right now Listen. as far as my phone knows what i'm talking about does apple, so have, like, does <laughs> apple have beyonce's whole catalog no I, I don't think so, but I. Well, that's where you would get. That's where you would. You do it the benefits a, a, a yeah. title. Yeah. I own it. No. Yeah. No, I know, but just <laughs> no, but the yeah. ease of like, oh, I want to listen to it on the road. Mm -hmm. You can just go in there and press play real quick with title. But why are y'all yeah. putting flowers in a camera? They're giving him his flowers. They're, They're giving Joshy to thing. his flowers. You couldn't see. No, I thought don't. they were making a new emoji for him. No. They why are they giving Josh his flowers? Just because. Uh, probably because the. Oh my God! Yeah, I thought we were going to get to it. It was. It's on the oh, docket. Oh, it is on. The, where is it? You it's you fine. stacked it. We oh, it so got pushed close. down. Yeah. Oh, so, if y'all didn't so know, close. we're in the room oh, with so the close. goat, greatest oh. of all time, Joshua Gonzalez. How could I? How far down did it get pushed? It's like five oh, down. Oh, right after we did the bonus, that happened. Yeah, so it was at the at the top where Josh was taking. Joshua, make yourself big. Make yourself and big. And you tell us the story of how you went and got a picture of Drake. And, the, and then Drake posted it. Tell it. Make yourself big. Is Women, let's story. preface it real quick. Let me let's preface it. Then I want you to go into it. This man, Josh, our best friend, he truly did not want to let down his good friend, Kevin. And he wanted to be with us when uh, we were in Chicago. Because he, as, as Joshua does, the reason why we have great pictures. Because I actually tried to fill in for him. She did a great job. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't send you <laughs> the ones the that didn't work out. I, I put some filters. I had eyelashes on Kevin in one of my pictures. <laughs> he wanted she to strung <laughs> all that together put in a TikTok. <laughs> no. I mean, like, look what I did. He wanted to be there with us on tour. And he kept contemplating. I mean, J. Cole, he's is he's starting his tour. I kind of want to, but I'm not sure. I got to shoot the food show, he blah, blah, blah. the last one. No, he wasn't even going to miss the food show. He man. wasn't. No, he, no, but he, he was worried. Close. He was, was worried, worried was that he was going to be late. He was worried that he, but it wasn't like he's going to miss it. Yeah, but in his mind, he was like, me being late to the food show is so much. I will miss one night of of uh, camera taking yes. picture -ography. And I might be late to the food show. Therefore, yeah. I just... Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. There's a lot sure. of moving parts. Uh, uh, it's, oh, it's yeah. so American much. American Airlines would have been delayed. We basically... It's true, though. Kevin and Angel basically had to bully this man into not coming. I said, I'll sock you out. I will punch the the, the mole off of your face. Come on. That's if what you, he said. If you show up on this Friday night when, when J. Cole and them are allowing you to get in the pit. I know Josh's dream. And he and then he was like, oh, yeah, and, and Drake might be there. I know Josh's dream. Who am I? Mm -hmm. Who am I? Mm -hmm. What kind of dream chaser? I'm essentially becoming Boeing. Uh -huh. If I say you gonna sit here and you gonna press play and you take picture of me with my belly, no, uh -huh. every night you be and, <laughs> get and that you only take it from the front because when you <laughs> take them side pictures, they never get posted. Getting all of my bad angles, get my thickness. <laughs> you get me catching me on the breathe out. Are you insane? <laughs> I, it don't matter which way I'm breathing. It's not gonna look the only. way I want it. <laughs> It's not going to look. So, so uh, the day before he left, I was like, the day before when he finally decided, I was like, why would you choose operating in your zone of excellence versus operating in your zone of genius? Which was a word. Who told him that? I said it to my friend, Joshua. You she told him, Angel. Because Angel going to be that black mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, come if on. Ever, if you ever doubt yourself, Angel going to, you doubt yourself at home, she going to pop up in, in the real. You could be in your deathbed, and I'm going to get you to convince that you can walk. You feel me? <laughs> you walking up into your grave, but you going to walk nonetheless. <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. <laughs> Man, so. Make yourself big. What's the story, though? I don't even understand. Tell us what happened. Um, let's know. see. And I don't. The there tour flyer came out probably about a month or so after the album dropped. And I was like, I want to go to the first show back. It's the first show after a pandemic. Cole had a performance like two weeks before for the iHeart Awards in Vegas. But he didn't perform any. No, here we go. go he didn't perform anything new because he was saving all that for the week after, which is Miami show. Um, and I'd been going back and forth on it. As the date got closer, because I was like, man, we're doing one more of the food show. Uh, I was like, and I committed to finish as a camera op on the show. And I wanted to remain true to that as my word. I was like, it seems like it's going to be a lot of moving parts. The, it was only one flight. It was going to get me there before 9. Usually we shoot at 10. 
in Chicago traffic. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Man, mm-hmm. that it's was a big real. deal. Um, but long story short, last Monday when we got back, Sunday or Monday, uh, even like the Friday and Saturday, I was even telling Kel, I was like, honestly, there's more reasons not to go than why I should. There's going to be more shows. Um, but Monday I made a decision. Tuesday I heard a rumor. Um, I was actually putting pieces together because Drake was out there. And then, but Cole normally doesn't bring people out on stage. That's mm-hmm. just not, that has been what he has done in the past, no matter who's in town. Mm-hmm. Um, but I made the decision, heard the rumor, and I was like, oh man, this might be kind of fire. And I was getting mad anxious about coordinating how the, my camera was going to get out there because normally I travel with my camera for the food show and uh, shout to Brennan and Tony for holding me down. Um, I was like, Brennan, if anything, I might be like 30 or 40 ish minutes late, but I'm gonna do my best to get there on time. And I was there even early. He was there early. What are you there that's when we G. arrived? Come at you? on. That's, that's we he, was there. he was already there. He was already there. That's my God. Huh? Yeah, the ball she can. Yeah, because you were obedient. Man. And hmm? let me tell you what, I took a red eye Thursday, uh, to get in there Friday morning, the day of the show, because we had to shoot the bonus on Thursday. And I wasn't going to miss everything. We shot that, and then we shot the Married at First Sight thing. So Friday, I got in there. And then that was the first show that I was getting, like, nervous and anxious about for a minute just because, like, I hadn't shot an arena in a long time. Um, and then it was my first time using two cameras at the same oh, he time. He had them things on him, Angel. I'm a harness. <laughs> he was, <laughs> I'm a little harness. I was going to post a video, but I couldn't necessarily – Unless I blurred out the credential because they're still using those credentials. Like, people will steal it and Mm -hmm. make their own and sneak in. So, I couldn't do that. But um, the show was crazy. It was was a lot of energy. It went late. There was actually a lot of, not issues, but, like, a lot of production hiccups because it was the first show back. Um, So, a lot of people were getting tired. But I saw that Drake, I mean, I saw Drake when we were, before the show started. You saw me in person? Yeah. Oh. Really? Yeah. You I mean, say hello, he or he room? just walked. By. No, he was talking because Cole started walking to the Cole is J Cole. J Cole, okay. yeah, yeah, because yeah, he just he, yeah, he right, just calls him Cole. Cole. Sorry. Go ahead. I mean, we don't know him like that. We yeah. we got to put J. I don't on know him. the yeah, man right, exactly. I, I, it I've might be. I might say times. Mr. J Cole. Uh huh. Even though I'm probably older than him, you're gonna be on eventually. Yeah. You're not even kept on stage. On. I yeah. was talking to own. So <laughs> go ahead. He was there with Drewski and. Drewski! Drewski's the host of the of the he tour. Is. He's also, cool. very smart business model, real quick on Drewski. He's hosting J. Cole's tour, but on the side, you want to meet me, buy the tickets to meet me. Okay, He's you want to side meet and greet? Yes. I'm surprised you got Merch. that. Merch. Genius. Oh, man. But go ahead. I don't know him. Booty Tay. <laughs> go ahead. But, uh, so they're chopping it up. Uh uh-uh, uh, put yourself back, bitch. I did. I wrote, give it two seconds. All right. It's still there. Don't put it on me and Angel. We haven't had enough. We talking, have, so I don't care, Joshua. Too. Leave it on you. Let us be in the background. We're switch. talking in the background. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I didn't want to be thirsty. I could have got photos of them backstage personal, but I know that's not how yeah. Cole Security likes to move. So I'm just like, let me be respectful and not See, get See, and that's why you're in the position you're in because um, you think like that. But anyway, went out. Drake got brought out at the end. Aside from the, the show was a little tough to shoot because like partially was in the pit, but then towards the end of the show I was just shooting from the crowd because it just a, it's a whole thing shooting arenas with security and people learning uh, what credentials get you where and all that fun stuff. So um, towards the end I was like, okay, he's gonna come out, but I'm just trying to find a good spot. Mm-hmm. And um, I kept going to this little pocket that was like in between these little sections uh, towards the front. Um, so then this one girl that was like at the e- the front edge of the section that I was shooting next to her, when Drake finally came out, she's like, oh, do you want to stand on this, on my chair? I was like, no, nah. I was like, you paid for tickets. Like, enjoy the show mm-hmm. by all means. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm here shooting. I'll figure it out. She's like, get up on this chair. I was like, all right, cool. So Sound like Marcus, up on there. get up on this get chair. Up, get up on this chair but, right um, now. Yeah. And honestly, throughout the whole time shooting the show, I don't know if it was because I was tired, uh, from the night before I didn't really sleep during the day. Um, I wasn't too excited about what I had got even after the show. Like, uh, my friend, um, was like, yo, what'd you think? I was like, honestly, man, it was like, there was a lot going on. I was like, I hope I got a couple. Mm-hmm. And then. Were all, you shocked when you saw how good the photos turned out when you went back through? I was through? going through. I, I asked usually, him the same question. Usually <laughs> when I go through the photos, 
uh, how I edit is like I import them all and then I'll bring them into Lightroom, which is an Adobe software. Cut a check, please. Um, uh -huh. They uh, and I just flag the ones that I think I might. It's like putting a little bookmark. Mm -hmm. I flagged the ones I think I might edit and I was starting to go through them. I was like, OK, I was like, there's a couple in here. And then I started getting towards the end and I didn't even realize that I got Drake in the air. Um, I mean, because that's, that's the one. Like, the, that's the, come on. Sa, uh, um, what? And you don't really see because he doesn't really. Uh, he has like some mannerisms and stuff that he does consistently, but I've never seen him like jump around like that. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in the BYU. He had to, he got to practice for the soaking event he had later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I got some. I mean, I still got some dope shots that are tucked. I don't know. What I'm did it feel it. like, Josh, when your picture was on Drake's Instagram? I that mean, was right there. That I didn't think he was going to post it, but shouts to the great Amir Abbas. Who did it? Who, who was, did it? Because that night, uh, he asked, uh, I was talking to Amir a little bit, and he was like, he's like, are you happy? I was like, honestly, we'll see after I edit these and see what I like. And then I was telling him, I was like, yo, I think I got some. Sh mm -hmm. um, but. He's like, he's like, send me a photo uh, when you can. So I sent it to him, and then he sent me a screenshot. He sent it to one of Drake's managers. And I was like, you slide, Amir, you. <laughs> and then the next day after, I mean, I didn't even get to sleep that night either. Because uh -huh. I had like two hours. We didn't get out of the arena until like 1230. My flight was at 630. Woo! Um, so I was like pretty much two nights of no sleep. But I was like, I'm not about to miss this flight, so I'm just gonna stay up. No, this is why this is happening to you in your 20s. That's exactly because the Lord why. knew you would no, have I'm the energy. That line, though. My, my body's like, you're pushing this 28 though. At it's, 41, it's not... there would have been no pictures. <laughs> there would have been no food show. I just would have been asleep at home. Angel, you didn't shoot nothing. Uh, uh I'm just sleepy. But, the uh, state of LA. <laughs> man, but no, I felt it though. Like landing in Chicago, I was like. Whew. But now, now you're rested, and that picture's still up. And also, Josh, I got one more thing I want to say. What'd you say, Joe? Because I feel like you were talking to Josh. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Come on. Well, we yesterday's need to hear one more time. It's not today's price. Wait. Yesterday's price. Mm -mm, Mañana. It's not today's price. Wait a second. You can sell that picture. Yeah, I signed nothing that said exclusivity, and that's what's because one the, art, the photographer owns, yes. owns that well, picture. Well, not only that, but sometimes if you come yeah. in properly or if you're representing a company, that's one thing I've realized that I've been really blessed with. Uh, and that's another thing I've been thinking about, honestly, since the Xavier Omar show. I was like, yo, I've really been moving around the music space just based off of relationships since, like, also shouts to Amir, but um, just based off relationships, like, I've I haven't had to sign. <laughs> I haven't had to sign anything that's like, okay, if you take these photos, these are of exclusive use mm -hmm. to the company first. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Somebody, Jay Freaky said, so Kevin gave him a raise? Like, no, no, that was, that was <laughs> not. No, 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 no. <laughs> yesterday's price. For me, is yes. Today's price. No, that's what Kevin price. means, guys. We all going up. <laughs> yesterday's price is absolutely today's price. It's today's <laughs> price. <laughs> that video's for the other people that got to pay Josh. <laughs> For me, it is absolutely the same. There's a lot going on here, guys. Uh, oh, no one. You guys got I was not talking to myself. <laughs> Everyone the, the else. The reason I was laughing because when he said he said, I said, oh, no, no let me, me come, let me clarify. <laughs> no, me, Kevin, me, Kevin, it is. Well. Today's price <laughs> is yesterday's price. <laughs> Just flipping around. Video, today's price is it's yesterday's, yesterday's price. price. <laughs> but Josh, are you gonna put that on a shirt? Josh, I want you can do this. I can definitely do that. That's like I said. That's one one of the blessings about not being under. It requires a lot of extra work and a lot more struggling in the moment. But, but that's um, gonna be fine, Josh. Like ninety eight percent of the photos I've taken, I would own exclusive. Come when on. you make low key the thing that's super duper amazing. Like for you and I, I'm very happy for you and I'm very proud of you. Uh, you you can have this this photo book. You could do like editions, right? Yeah. You could do like mm -hmm. from uh, 2013, like the glow up of Josh. And you have people in here who would love to buy. Even you just did a print. If you want to, I'll, I'll take one of these down. You if you sell a print, I buy it. You'll take down the line of Judah that's over here. Yeah, that's a beautiful one. It's got all the colors. I, I feel so strongly about that one. I got the. I've, I got to keep it. No, we gonna put Drake and Drizzy. Rizzy. Drake could take the place of a lot of the even even Will. 
What do you mean? Will? I love Will. We can put Will over there beside the line. We can put Will over there. He can look right at me. I want to get Joshy up here. Come on, Joshy. We can, I, we can put it up in here, man. Yeah. Josh gonna come out with a photo book, y'all. It's gonna be so fire. It's gonna wait. Call, it's gonna be called today's price is yesterday's price. <laughs> today's price is yesterday's price. <laughs> but seriously, I think the thing, the way this works is when you take those dope pictures, mm-hmm. right? Especially when the artists post them, then festivals come. We talked to Greg Noir. He was on Aska. He was like, "That's how it works. Mm-hmm. You get dope pictures. You get the access. You respect the process of the artist. Oh, yeah. People will be like, oh, no, Josh is cool. You know what I'm saying? There's so much of this industry. Nepotism. It's Josh is cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, like my, my, my boy, was, well, who's your boy? Some people be like, man, was Josh available? He's cool. And there's other times you'd be like, mm-hmm. you don't Dub want that him. person. Take his name off. Give me his name. Yeah. You don't want that person. You know, I don't yeah. refer people too often unless, sure I, unless they good. And I get them together before I do the you referral. Sure do. Angel has uh, brought a uh, lot of the black women on the improv show are Angel's recommendations have yeah, become main cast. Crystal. Oh, no, no. All the ones that are recurring. Yeah, Candice, Quinn, Denora. Denora. Love mm-hmm. Denora. New season. Oh, that's another church announcement. New season of the improv show dropping uh, when? tomorrow. Really? The first episode of the new uh, with the new set is dropping tomorrow. Well, look at I that. wish we could have a studio audience. We haven't been able to because of COVID, mm-hmm. but a studio audience will be so dope. I think we're almost ready. I think you can uh, do it. You can definitely do it. You can definitely do it, but I, I think it's it, it's going to be a whole different feel. Yeah, when you I, bomb, you bombing. I, I was at Wild and Out taping one time. It's, when it's, it feels a lot harder when you bomb. In yeah, front of people. you can definitely do it right now, though. So anyway, we love y'all. Congratulations to Joshy. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Josh, you can cut it here so that the video can be um, monetized. But then I want to play them this Bye. Tim song while the stage crew is here. Listen to this first song off Tim's album, guys. Listen, just vibe with me. It's crazy things. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another thing of fire. There's another one. There's another one. There's another thing of fire. Fire. There's another thing of fire. With my boy Kev on stage, and that chick angel.